Welcome everyone to Altea Active at Home. This is Donna. We're going to do a gentle, gentle yoga class today. Uh, we'll begin in a seated position, but before, just think about, you know, some props if you like. It's nice to have something to support you or help you out with just getting into these poses a little more, you know, correctly or more anatomically neutral or, or balanced. Uh, I have a couple blocks you can use or not. I also love this kind of big, huge, cushiony blanket that you can sit on or you can put under your knee. Um, and when we come into any of the, you know, seated and lower poses at the end um, as well, you can um, use them, use it then. All right, we're gonna get started here in um, just seated. So in the seated position, you can have a leg out, you can have both legs out if you want, you can have legs in front, you can bend your knees, just get comfortable. I'm just gonna sit in one easy sitting pose. And then just sit up comfortably here. I like to sit on my, my blanket, just allows the hips to be a little higher. We'll soften those knees, make sure they're feeling good. Hands down on the knees, palms up if you wish. And then just close your eyes. I'm gonna take these first few moments just to arrive here, just to settle. Relax your shoulders, relax your neck. Relax your muscles in your face, your eyes. And just beginning to breathe. And in yoga, we just breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. And just pay attention to your breathing right now. And just to allow yourself to become a little more present in this moment, just notice what's going around you, on around you, as in sounds, feelings, vibrations. Next, we're just going to lengthen the breath a little bit here. You can visualize the breath starting from the tip of the tailbone, moving up your spine, moving like through a hollow tube, out the crown of the head, and then exhale. Follow your breath all the way down your spine. Just inhaling. Pause at the top if you wish, and exhale. Just visualize the breath moving down your spine till it trickles out at the very tip of the tailbone. And let's just do a few more of these on your own. All right, we'll just blink open the eyes. We'll wiggle up our toes here and prepare for our first posture of moving into a tabletop. So once again, if you like to have something soft under the knees, please, by all means, you can take your folded up towel or whatever that's nice for you under the knees, particularly if you know a little harder surface. Now in this tabletop position, um, hips are over knees, tops the feet are on the ground or if you want, toes under. And then hands, we practice these same hands um, for downward dog. So open up the fingers quite wide and then really spread the distance between the thumb and the pinky finger and then really root through the thumb and the um, index finger down into the ground. Press up into the ground. We're gonna lift our head up, sink the belly, sit bones back and apart, moving through this cat cow. And then exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin under. And then inhale, head comes up. Exhale, back again. This is in the cat part. Inhale, this is the cow part. And just feel your spine starting to warm up. Just take this really slow. We wanna just gently move into this, particularly if you haven't been moving the spine for a while or you're doing other activities keep going
a few more. And then next, we'll just walk that right foot back, push the heel back, get a great stretch into that back heel, and just feel what's going on in the back of your leg, particularly your calf muscle. And then the other leg. Nice little stretch. And then toes together, knees out, and let's just come into a nice calm child's pose. So just hang out down here. Now, the head can come down to the hands. Maybe you like to have that head on a block and just let the hips sink. Sometimes it's even nice to have a blanket behind the tops of your calf muscles. Oh, well, that feels good actually. Or even under the tops of your feet. This uh, pose really does work the tops of your feet. It really stretches your shins. If you've been doing walking lately, this is a nice little uh, squeeze into the hip flexors as well. All right, from here, we're gonna come all the way back up to seated again. So option to sit on a blanket, option to um, sit on a block even, yeah, feet out, feet in. Just working the neck a little bit here. So just sit up nice and tall, let those shoulder blades go back, and then interlace the fingers right behind your back and open up that chest. So just feel like you're squeezing between the shoulder blades, Relax your neck, even take your chin side to side. Oh. See if you can press your hands down a little bit more towards the ground, even opening at the elbows a little bit. See how things are feeling in your chest today. Oh, all through that front body. Good, we're gonna rise, inhale the arms up, and then exhale, press everything down. So in yoga, the inhale is always on the up, and the exhale's always on the down. So let's take it, inhale up, hands together, exhale down. Right hand comes to the ground. Now really ground through the left side of the body. Lift up, lengthen all through the rib cage, hinge over. And take a few breaths here. Just feel that nice stretch right along that side body. And then up the other side, left hand down, reach up with the right and then Round through the right hip, glute. Breathe in and out a few breaths here. And then back up again. We're gonna interlace the fingers forward, press them away, and then reach all the way up to the sky. Now here, sort of slide the shoulder blades down. If this is uncomfortable, you could always take the hands apart. And then inhale, just a little turn, not too intense right now. Our first turn over towards the right, back through the center, and then over towards the left, back through the center, again, again, take the arms down. We're gonna take ear to shoulder onto the left and take the left hand above and just sort of give it a little stretch. Right arm comes out and you can flex the fingers and feel that nice lengthening all through the neck. And then adjust the chin up, down, side, side, and just notice what's going on with that neck of yours over there. Now I'm mirroring you, so that's your right mind left. All right, release. Let's other side. So ear to shoulder on your right. And then press out the left hand away. And then take the chin down, right, left, up.
There we go, back through the center again. And let's just take some big shoulder rolls around and around and just open up those shoulders, squeezing between the shoulder blades. They might be making a little bit of noise. Yes, they are today, that's for sure. And then take them in the other direction. Actually, let's take the hands onto the shoulders and let's move the elbows back, up, around, and almost coming forward and down. Up, back, down, and around, and coming forward and down. Good. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to come back to that tabletop position again. Here, you can move your blanket. You could use it under your knees if you wish. Back into that tabletop position. And let's take the left arm out to the side. That's your left arm facing that way. And then moving it across and down. And then look towards the right. So feeling a nice stretch uh, into the back of the shoulder blades. Now notice that the hips flopped over to the right. You're going to slide them to the left. Option to walk the right arm forward option to take the right arm behind whatever feels good for you just feel that little squeeze and um, through the spine we we'll have a little twist here breathe and then back through the center we're going to press all the way up other side right arm comes out palm faces up slide it through right shoulder comes down looking towards the left if the hips fell to the left, pull them over to the right, just aligned with your knees and feet. Option, walking the right arm, left arm up and forward. Or if you want, you can take it behind the back, wherever it happens to land. All right, back through center again pressing all the way up. We're going to tuck our toes under here. Now this is where a block can come in handy. And if you need something under your knees, we're just going to work the feet a little bit. Our feet are probably getting quite tight. So it's nice just to do this, what's called a toe squat. I'm tucking my toes under a little more. You could always lean farther forward if you wish. Remember, never going into pain, but I want you to feel that really good stretch right into the feet, the toes, the bones in the feet. As things open up and you feel a little more comfortable, you can start to put the weight back. Still maybe taking your hands and adding a little bit of weight on your block or forward. And if you feel really comfortable, you can come all the way back and smile and breathe. Remembering we have 26 bones, 32 joints in our feet and they get really tight. If we're doing a lot of walking these days, our feet are gonna get tight. We won't stay here too long, but it's really nice. The feet affect the whole body. They affect the entire back, through the back of the body, all the way up into the neck as well. A few more breaths here. <sighs> yes, much needed. Okay, let's come forward again. We're gonna move through this tabletop position, but toes can come down, toes can come up, maybe just release them a little bit after that. Oh. And then walk the hands a little farther forward, still index finger is going to face forward, fingers are quite wide again, and then let the body just hover forward. So we've got this diagonal line from the knees to the top of the back of the head, and the uh, wrists are under the shoulders, uh, triceps are back and then we start to slowly lower. Now this is really uncomfortable. You can always come down onto the forearms and then come down this way. I'm just giving you some uh, different variations for moving through what's called up plank to down plank. So we're just gonna slowly lower down. Just gonna move back a little bit. Take the hands right beside the chest. Now press the toes into the ground, feel the knees rise. Let's take the head down for a moment. We're just coming into a baby cobra. So in a baby cobra, I want you to feel the muscles in your legs firmed, squeezing through the belly, so in the core, and then slide the shoulder blades down your back. Keep your eye gaze just down. Try not to lift that chin up. Feel your back working, strengthening the back muscles. Exhale and lower. All right, so not a lot of weight on the hands. Let's work that again. So point the toes away, feel the toenails on the ground, maybe the knees lift, 
legs are firmed, almost like you're squeezing in through the midline of the legs, the inner thighs. And then inhale, slide the shoulder blades back. Oh, exhale and lower. Nice. Tuck the toes. Back to tabletop. Here we go. We're going to move into our first down dog. So those fingers, once again, really important to open them up and then have a little bit of a suction cup under the, the back of the palm, under the palm. Uh, knees are under, under the hips. Tuck your toes. You're going to lift your knees up and take your hips back, pushing out of your hands here. So really push into your hands. So triceps are moving back, biceps are moving forward. Your arms are shoulder distance apart. Your feet are hip distance apart. Now lifting up the pelvic floor, rising up to the hips, and then pressing down through the back legs. Now the heels do not need to come on the ground here. Let that relax the neck here. Just release it a little bit. Eventually, now if down dog is not comfortable today, you can always remain in that tabletop position or you can always come to child's pose. So let's take a few breaths, inhaling, still pressing up and back, and then down through the back body pressing the front thighs back, eventually feeling like the lower rib cage is moving towards the thighs, really pressing into the hands. Take last few breaths here. Beautiful. Come down anytime you want. Now we're going to look forward, inhale, and then just take a couple little steps, leisurely walks, leisurely walks to the front of the mat. Here we go. Yep. And then just hang, first forward bend, but we're just gonna make move this into ragdoll. So let the feet be hip distance apart. You're gonna really ground through that big toe mound, outer pinky toe, inner heel, outer heel. A lift up through the pelvis. You can bend the knees as much as you want. And let's just shake the head, relax the upper body a little bit here, just hanging, breathing in, breathing out. Now, if you want to just move to a little straighter in the legs, but never have that full extension, have that tiny little, little bend in the knees, you can catch hold of opposite elbows and then let the head drop forward, looking right through the knees. Once again, pulling up through the pelvis, grounding into your feet. And then inhale, take the hands onto the shins and press away. We're going to lengthen the spine here. Eye gaze straight on that ground. Halfway lift. Exhale back into Uttanasana, forward bend. Next, rise up on the inhale, press through the feet. We're going to take a wide arm up, reverse swan. Arms come all the way up, touch. And then we exhale, take the hands, heart center. All right, we're gonna add just a modified sun salutation and then move into some warriors. From here, grounding the feet again. Let's actually, let's, let's just review that Tadasana. So feet are hip distance apart. If you prefer knees, uh, toes together, heels out, that's fine. Everyone has their preference. I prefer to have stacked um, joints. So knees or hip distance apart. Looking at your toes, I want you to lift up all 10 toes for a moment and then press big toe mound down, pinky toe, and see if you can get the rest. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. <laughs> we just work on that, pressing the feet down into the ground. So we, it's called rooting the feet. So inner, outer, inner, outer. Knees are slightly bent here, shoulders up and back, collarbones wide. Now I want you to really pull up through belly and ribs. So we're really tucking in and drawing up the belly and ribs. Mountain pose, Tadasana. All right, very important pose. We're gonna start, mountain pose. Hands, heart, center. And I'll give you any variation modifications you want. We'll just do a couple here. So we're gonna inhale, exhale, arms come down, inhale, rise, and then exhale, we float into that forward bend. Mm -hmm. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Your option is to come back into tabletop or you can move back into a down dog. Just sort of play with that down dog. You can stay in this down dog, right? Really pushing into the hands, the triceps moving back, ears along 
the inner elbows, looking through the knees, or you can come through that chaturanga or high plank to low plank. So we just look forward, we take the body over the wrist, shoulders over wrist, move a little farther forward, we're taking the knees down, tops of the feet come down, we slowly lower. Now I'm gonna just move my hands back a little bit here. Once again, moving into that baby cobra. So push the toes back, ground through the tops of the toenails. Inhale, shoulder blades back. Exhale, lower. Beautiful. From here, tuck the toes. Press back up. Come through tabletop. So just take the hands under. Once again, option to stay in tabletop or option to pick the hips up and back to down dog again. Let's take a few breaths. Inhale, look forward, or walk to the front of the mat, or you could always come from tabletop. Step forward, step forward. Inhale, halfway left. Exhale, lower, root those feet. Use the core to rise up, back up into mountain pose. All right, we'll just do that one more time and we'll add some here. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hinge at the hips, float down. Halfway lift on the inhale, forward bend on the exhale. Plant the hands, tabletop, down dog. Remain in tabletop or down dog, or float the body forward, come take the shoulders forward over the wrist, knees come down, tops the feet, land. You might wanna just adjust the hands right beside the chest. Point the toes away. Slide the shoulder blades. Inhale. Eye gaze just on the ground. Exhale. Baby cobra. Back up once again. And let's just come into tabletop. And from tabletop, one more. Down dog or stay in tabletop. Inhale, look forward. Walk or step to the front of the mat. Halfway lift, exhale lower, ground and root to rise. Hands, heart center. All right, we're gonna move into a low crescent lunge or low lunge. So having a couple blocks here is kind of nice. If you have blocks or something you can lean on or not, it doesn't really matter, it's your preference. I'll just show you with blocks or no blocks. So standing in mountain pose, inhale, rise. Exhale, float again. Inhale, halfway lift. I'll take the blocks. If you have them, you take them right beside your ankles. Your feet are hip distance apart. Slide the right foot back. Now, here's a, a great opportunity to use something cozy under that right knee. So I'll use that folded up blanket. So here, just ensuring that this right knee is over the right heel, feet are hip distance apart, and we can begin in this position, and we can stay here. Now press into the blocks or without blocks, just press, I like to go onto my knuckles here, press in, let the back of the pelvis lean forward. So feel that wonderful stretch right into your hip flexors, the front of your right leg into the quad. Option to remain here or option to press up, we place the hands onto the left thigh, just behind the knee, press in. Now once you're here, I want you to pull this left hip back a bit, the right hip forward, keeping things nice and squared. Good, and then really pull and tuck in through the ribs and belly. And at the same time, I want you to really press into the front um, toe mound, the big toe mound. Option to stay here, option to take the arms up if you wish, and then slide the shoulder blades down your back. Just take a few breaths. Great. Slide the hands down, slide that left foot back. We come into tabletop. Option to stay in tabletop. Or if you want to take your cushioning under the left knee ready to go, 
we're tucking the toes, pressing up to down dog, or you can stay in tabletop. Take a few breaths here. Inhale, look forward, walk to the front of the mat. We come into that forward bend, feet are hip distance apart. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lower, root to rise. Hands, heart center. Other side, inhale, rise. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. If you have blocks right beside the ankles, take the left foot straight back this time. Make sure there's space between the legs so you don't wanna take the left foot behind the right foot. Take it a little to the left and then take that knee down. Once again, nice to cushion up that left knee. Right knee is now over right heel. Option to stay here. Once you do, sort of press into the block, lift up. Feel the back of the pelvis come down and get a beautiful stretch right into that left uh, hip flexor and quad. And then pull that right hip crease back a bit. Really ground through your front uh, foot into the big toe mount. Option, hands on thighs, lift up a little bit. Once again, sink down. Try to sort of slide that right hip back a bit. Left hip comes forward. Take a few breaths. Arms can reach up. Slide them down your back of your shoulders. Good. Breathe. Feel strong. Muscles are firmed. Wonderful. Exhale. We'll press all the way back. Slide that right foot back here. Option to stay into tabletop or down dog. Inhale, look forward, walk or step to the front of the mat. Feet are hip distance apart. Uttanasana, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Inhale, exhale, forward bend, ground through the feet, rise all the way up. Hands, heart center. All right, we're gonna come into some warrior series. So uh, beginning with warrior two, so just face the front of the mat. Um, feet are comfortably, you know, three to four feet, whatever feels comfortable for you. And then we're gonna just move the front toes so that they're facing the right wall. Now I do like to line up heel to instep. Uh, some people like to line up heel to heel. So it's up to you what feels comfortable. Once you're in this position though, really ground through that outer, we call the knife edge of the foot, so that outer and feel that inner arch rise. Lift up, lengthen the heart, arms, sort of open that chest, lengthen the collarbones. We bend up the right knee. It comes over, you can always adjust it, over right knee, over the right heel. Over time, this top leg, this right leg can become parallel to the ground or it can be wherever you like it at this moment. Now, once we're here, arms are at shoulder height, really engage those arms, strong arms. We look towards the right arm, middle finger tips. Now once we're here again, just make sure that the knee lines up over the middle toes. So often what happens is that knee falls forward, so just take it back a little bit. Let's take a few breaths here, and then we pull in belly and ribs. Lower, breathe, strong warrior. Have a nice soft gaze, relax the neck. So really pressing into that outer heel and then lower the pelvis a little bit, lengthen through the spine. And let's up again. Okay, we're gonna come to the other side. So turn the left foot forward, line up. In step to heel, press into the outer right edge of that foot, the knife edge we call it. Shoulders back, breathe in and then exhale and lower. So left knee comes over, left heel, just lining up that <laughs> left knee over the middle toes, looking towards the middle fingertip. Breathe in. Once again, really pulling in belly and ribs. 
strong core, soft gaze, relax the neck here. All right, inhale, rise up. I'm gonna add to that is a reverse warrior. So other side again, right toes face middle, line up, get into that inhale, rise, exhale, warrior two. Now from here, so just sort of maintain this lower body nice and strong and don't let the lower body move. We're gonna inhale, palm goes up on the right, take the left hand and just let it come down and softly touch the back of the thigh. Then reach up with the right arm. Now it can come straight up here, whatever feels comfortable for you. If you feel a little more comfortable, adding that little back bend, reach up, still maintaining the integrity of the lower part of the body. A few breaths. Awesome, you guys. A few more breaths here. Beautiful arm comes back. Inhale, rise, press into that front foot, other side. Okay. All right, warrior two again. So I'm just adjusting my warrior two. Outer knife edge of the right foot, left hand forward. All right, inhale, front palm opens towards the ceiling and then take the right hand back left arm goes up still keeping the lower body nice and strong and sturdy into what's called our reverse warrior peaceful warrior or exalted warrior let's breathe in and breathe out all right back to warrior two Inhale, rise up. From here, you may want to take the feet in a little bit, so a heel toe it. We're coming into wide-legged forward bend. So with wide-legged, I do like to use a block or you can have something to lean onto so that we lengthen through the spine. So get comfortable with the feet here. So in a forward bend, I prefer the toes to be in a little bit and the heels out. It just lines up the top of the femur, which is your leg bone, right into that pelvic joint. Now grab my block, place it in front here. So pressing once again into the outer edge of the feet. So right down into that outer edge. Take the hands on the hips, inhale up, hinge from the hip creases, forward and down. Now place your hand on your block, and so just find length through your spine. So here, just think about pushing the sit bones to the back wall, crown of the head to the forward wall, finding length at the beginning. Just get comfortable here. Always have the option. You can bend the knees up at any, whatever feels comfortable for you. Just want to feel that nice length and obviously getting a nice stretch through the back of the legs. Inhale up and then exhale. You begin to lower comfortably. Maybe the hands come in front here. Maybe the hands walk a little in line with the feet. And that's inhale, kind of lift up again, lengthen the spine, and then exhale, lower. One more time, inhale, lengthen the spine, or on the block, and then exhale, lower. Now, we're just gonna add a little twist. So uh, if it's, you know, getting a little uncomfortable, please bend up the knees. You'll take the your right hand over to the left foot or anywhere close along. So if you just need to take it over here or on the here, wherever it feels comfortable. So I want you to feel steady and sturdy in this one. So you might notice that the weight is a little farther onto the heels. So just sort of adjust and balance your weight. And then inhale, rise up with that left arm sort of looking over towards your hand or wherever that feels comfortable for your neck. Breathe in, out. Good, other side. So we start to walk, left hand towards the right foot, wherever that is for you. If you wanted to use a block and place the hand on a block, that's fine. 
And then, wherever that feels comfortable, really ground through the feet, make sure you're feeling steady. Just sort of playing with the weight on your feet. And then when you're ready, inhale, rise up your right arm towards the ceiling, looking wherever that is. Getting a nice little twist through the spine. Breathe in and out. And then back through the center again. You can bend your knees if you wish. Take your hands onto your hips. Inhale, rise all the way up. Ah, all right. We're going to take feet in a little, a little inwards and this time moving into goddess pose so the toes are out and the heels are in so let's take the shoulder blades back and just imagine we're lifting up nice and tall I want you to feel like you're really pulling in through the belly and the ribs strong core here we'll take the arms out lift up and then exhale start to bend those knees so feel like the the hip points are rising up so hip points are at the front of the hips here, rising up, lengthening through the spine. And just feeling the chest is nice and open, the collarbones are widened, and then the pelvis sinks down. Sink comfortably for you. So really play with the, making the feet feel nice and grounded, smiling. Last few breaths here. And they're gonna inhale, rise all the way up, and then exhale down again. Good, one more. Just let the pelvis lower, but lengthen through the spine. Pull the rib cage and belly in. Breathe and smile. Perfect, let's lift up again. That's goddess pose, hands heart center. All right, let's move into a balance here. So we always begin to balance nice and steady in, in that mountain tadasana. Shoulders back, put the weight onto your right leg. Just gently begin, once again, really engaging the core. Shoulders back, eye gaze somewhere to keep your uh, attention to and your focus on. And then just begin to rise and lift up your left leg. Now, arms out, you can stay here. If it feels comfortable, you can take the hands under the leg. Steady, steady breath. Option to stay here. Option to let the leg come out to the side. Smooth breath, smooth gaze. Strong core, leg in front, and down we go, other side. Okay, press all the weight into your left foot. Lift up your right leg. You could always even just begin with the toe on the ground and just begin to lift it up a little bit and sort of play with that, whatever feels comfortable. And eventually, wherever it comes for you, a balance is a balance. Maybe taking the leg a little higher, hands underneath. Feel the wobbles on that foot that you're standing on, which is super, super great for your balance. And then if you want, you can open up your right leg. And then foot down. All right. We're going to take it to the ground now. So hands on the hips. Feet are hip distance apart. Soften your knees. We're just going to roll down. Hands forward and down. And come all the way onto your belly. I'm going to grab this block here. So there's an option to use the block if you wish. And just take a few breaths here. Just integrating all the standing postures that we just went through. And then we'll move into Sphinx Pose, if you're familiar with Sphinx Pose here. So Sphinx Pose, just relax the top of your toenails on the ground, relax the backs of your knees, relax your buttocks, lift up the upper body, elbows are under your shoulders, you can catch hold of opposite triceps, take the hands forward and just place the hands on the ground. 
Once again, releasing your buttocks and just feeling your spine naturally sinking into the earth here. Just take a few breaths. Now, you have also the option of just supporting the forehead with a block if you wish, so that it releases kind of the back of the neck. If you don't have a block, you know, just make sure the back of your neck is not tight. So even taking it side to side. But in the Sphinx pose, which is a passive back bend, it's a, a wonderful pose to really start to lengthen the spine or uh, create flexibility within the spine and stretching that connective tissue that uh, is right along the spine that can be quite tight. And obviously this is a wonderful antidote for a lot of sitting that might be happening. Breathe all the way up the spine, out the crown of the head and then down the spine, relax. Nice, and just lower for a moment here. Take the hands under the shoulders, just press up. You can take a quick little child's pose for a nice little counter pose. Just rounding this back for a moment. We're gonna come and sit forward. Move into what's called just this bound angle pose. So just working through the, the legs a bit. We'll take the feet. Um, together. Option, once again, if this is uncomfortable to sit on a block, this is a more energetic pose as opposed to a butterfly. So I'm going to move the feet closer in towards the groins. You can even open up the feet and see if you can allow the legs to move down a bit and lift up. So feel what's going on within uh, your inner legs. So just lift up. And breathe. I almost feel like you pull the tops of the fronts of your leg towards the back wall and then lift up. So. All right, again, we're coming back down again. If you've got a block, you can have it available if you wish. And just moving onto your back. And here, the feet are just under, the backs of the feet under the knees, crossing the right leg over, flex that foot. Allow that right uh, thigh to move away. You can stay here if you wish. You could take a block under your left foot if you want. Arms out, just working through that right hip. So as you breathe in, exhale, press just in your mind, sort of that right thigh away. And if you want to go full expression, that's thread the needle. You take the hands interlaced behind the back of the left leg and then add a little more. So just breathe in. And just feel that stretch. You can even take the feet a little bit to the right, to the left here or even just forward and back or stay with the foot on the block reminded if you're feeling the pose you're in the pose and the pose is working on your body just releasing some tension in your hip all right let's come to the other side here I'm just going to move the block over begin with both knees bent heels are under the knees, pick up the left leg, flex the foot, let that right leg go out. You know, even just sort of play with right or left here as well. Option, foot, blocks have different heights too if you prefer just to leave it in here. And just think of pressing that left thigh forward. Not pushing it forward, just pressing it forward. Left knee forward. Or full expression, 
once again is thread the needle and then try to relax the shoulders back here they can be a little tense when we come into this pose it's actually you know even nice to take a belt behind the leg or if you had a towel that you could take behind the leg if that's preferable noticing if the upper body is too tense and uncomfortable breathe in last few breaths all right we'll just take that away give yourself a little hug here side to side and then start to stretch the feet away ready for your final posture of Shavasana whatever is comfortable for you arms away just relax the neck and Remaining in Shavasana as long as you wish. This is your place and your house, but that's the end for me, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Namaste.